Hey, Lawrence. Hi, Jensen. Glad to see you here. Um, let me see, because uh, I was just replying to an email from <laughs> you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I was trying to connect and I had a 404, so it was a bit yes. stressful, but we managed to do it. Um, I, th I, th I thought, were you in the, the Nginx workshop just now or not? Because there were you were okay so you managed to make it okay yep okay so just on time <clears throat> um would um your colleague and now i don't know how to pronounce your colleague's names shan nawaz yes okay all right well i think we're ready to ready to start when you are um So uh, perhaps I'll, st I'll kick off this session, right? This is a round table. It's about 25 minutes. Okay. Um, the topic is real world challenges with, um, with deploying microservices. Okay. Um, in fact, not so much deploying, moving to. So that implies there's something, something beforehand. So, um, just an introduction to Nginx, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, part of F5 since November last year, um, from what I recall, and um, powered by open source, um, working on some of the busiest sites in the world, and now into application delivery with load balancing, a whole load of stuff to secure scale and, and um and create an easy, easy, flexible environment to um, allow enterprise applications for uh, the modern legacy system. Okay, so uh, on this call so far, we have Laurent, who's the director of solutions engineering uh, for Nginx APAC BU within F5. So I'm not sure how you run, whether you run as a separate organization or if you've been integrated. But I, I understand you have a team of, of technical solution architects. So uh, this session could get quite technical. Um, so I invite the audience, if you have any questions, if you're technical, let us know. If you're more on the business side, uh, then we can uh, ask the questions as appropriate. And this is very much reliant on your input as well. Um, so questions are needed. Um, so with that, Lauren, I'm not sure how you wanted to introduce yourself, whether you had a deck of slides or how you will want to present present this topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In, um, for the sake of, I would say, gathering a few ideas and to kind of uh, guide the conversation, I have, I have a set of slides that I could possibly share. Just tell me how many slides there would be. 
Uh, I just put a lot of slides just uh, in case there is uh, some specific questions, but I have like 13 slides. Okay. Uh, but but it's not it's not to go over the the whole set of slides. Let's let's try to make it I would say more uh, useful in a sense. Um, we, we, we already had some questions come in. Yep. And a lot of it is, you know, what's the best practices around microservices? Yep, when, exactly. When to choose them, when not to choose them. And I suppose there's an interlock here about where people are in their maturity of IT and of business. So that's that kind exactly. of context would be useful. Exactly, exactly. So 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 we know we know by, by, by fact, I would say, and we this is what yeah. we're observing and discussing with most of our customers that uh, uh, the transition to microservices is started and is going by far uh, to be kind of the norm in the, in the near future. But uh, doing so, uh, there are, I would say, different scales of microservices architecture and infrastructure. So uh, it could be just, I would say, to test uh, uh, temperature of the water, and then you would go with something like 5, 10 microservices. Gauge how to handle those. And, and we see that in some instances, uh, the flow of uh, microservices is way higher than that. And overall, what we're saying and what we have been discussing, uh, we say globally, it's not only in APAC, we kind of came up with a, I would say, average number of 15 to 20 microservices. This is where uh, the, the, the real problems are surfacing. And uh, okay, someone want me to go full screen like this one, or want my slide? <laughs> I uh, think your uh, slides would uh, be uh, better if you could make it full screen. Yeah. Okay, let, let let's do it this way. Okay, and oops, this way. Okay, and this is where uh, what we're seeing is when the real problems associated with uh, microservices are, are appearing. And for that sake, I had, I would say uh, some, we, we had, we have a, a few, a few graphs and a few analysis showing that after the, that number of microservices, this is where you're starting st to struggle with visibility, with security, and, and where it is needed to have, I would say more, I would say streamline uh, uh, services or functions to control how you deploy your microservices, what they are doing with within uh, with each others, and how you secure this kind of co communication, and how you monitor the whole uh, application state, and 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 that 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 is I would say the the kind of the norm that we're following internally at F5, and when when I say F5, it includes Nginx, because to just to answer your question, uh, your initial question, uh, if we are acting as a separated BU. We are now, I would say, part of F5, so we are mixing, I would say, technologies and customers and uh, challenges together, and and that that's really where where I would say we kind of uh, align together when we see that microservices environment are around 15 to 20 uh, microservices. This is where we 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 are having discussions on what next and what type of solution would help uh, going further. Because, uh, as I said, that trend is, is massive, and that, that goes, uh, um, I would say, then to introduce things like my, uh, service meshes and the challenges that which are which are coming with. Laura, would you mind screen on your presentation? Yeah, I can do that. I, it could be my eyesight, but it could also be my screen size as well, which is pretty small. So at least I can see the um, the uh, traditional application and the modern application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So again, for for the um, like, like I was saying, so um, when customers are transforming applications, uh, it's not a, a full big bang. They're not just transforming a legacy app into a microservice app from from one day to another. It goes mostly uh, during multiple transition phases. And that was one of the topics that we addressed to get to today, uh, which was how and, and what challenges are, are, are exposed with those um, transition. 
So sometimes it is um, it is uh, uh, maybe just one function or, or one connectivity of the uh, legacy app that is going first to microservices and then uh, kind of uh, be the, the leader or, or the sandbox where to uh, practice and, and, and learn from that. And down the road, uh, we see this is where um, uh, customers are, are getting um, components from uh, cloud environments or on-prem environment that they're starting to mix together just for the sake of de developing faster their application or develop developing faster this, these pieces of the application. And this is where the complexity is, uh, is, is popping up. Okay, great. So, so are you finding, how are they doing this? Are they doing it in public cloud, multi-cloud, on-prem? Where, where's the place to start? The, the, trend, the trend that we're seeing right now is really uh, multi-cloud. Uh, we, we tend to see less and less, I would say, mono-cloud or on-prem type of application when it comes to, to, to microservices. Uh, for multiple reasons, uh, of course, cost of resources, availabilities of, of technologies or ease of consumption of these technologies and and uh, uh, as we're, we're talking about apis uh, a lot of services right now are being pushed uh, through apis and with apis on the different cloud providers platforms and uh, so so many of our customers i would say are having pieces of the application on, on one cloud provider another piece on another cloud provider and to, to some extent they have to have a, a a consistent view of, of those, a consistent management of those. And, and this is where also we're being, I would say, more and more engaged with conversion with them just for the sake of having a consistent view of those and a consistent management of those, of those applications. And uh, uh, the thing that we're um, discussing a lot with our customers when they are on that transition to, to microservices is how to get the proper analytics of course, uh, the way to get the analytics on a Microsoft environment and Azure environment, to get the analytics from a, um, a, a Google uh, cloud uh, environment and the AWS cloud environment are uh, different tools. So to some extent, it's, it's kind of, I would say, mixing things uh, not in a proper way. And then uh, our customers are just expressing, yeah, help me having a consistent view of, of the application which some, sometimes leads to having a consistent view of the security as well of the application. Just to support that transition to multi-cloud. Okay, so uh, what, what would be the, ch the challenges to take it back to the, uh, the topic, the challenges of this? And, um, and I know there could be many places, right? There could be- uh, Yes. <laughs> places, and I, th I think, uh, I think your best place to, to talk about it, and maybe in no order of priority, or if you do have an order of priority in terms of what people might might need to know. Yeah, yeah. one other thing, and thankfully I have one slide to address it. <laughs> and from an architecture perspective, this is where I would say most of our customers are, are, are I would say struggling, how to um, open their platform to consume traffic from uh, the external environment, I would say, and then uh, 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 throw that traffic into their applications and do it, I would say, from a secure manner and having it done with the proper visibility, the proper automation, the proper orchestration of, of those services. And, and uh, uh, this is usually where I would say this discussion and the projects are starting. This is what we're saying. So in many instances, what we what we starting what we are starting with is kind of uh, working on the edge, how to uh, deal with the north um, south type of traffic from internet into the application. As a uh, as a uh, we say the huge uh, as a old time type of uh, security, let's let's kind of uh, get the the, the gate uh, properly secured. And once that, that gate is properly secured, then let's see what's going on inside inside the house, and and starting to think about the microservices environment and the the, the, the Kubernetes uh, type of thing, the orchestration of, of services, and then the the after the orchestration, so the choose the choice uh, is often made with Kubernetes with Red Hat OpenShift, then 
let's talk, let's talk about the security. And this is where we engage now with the visibility and security type of discussion. So traditionally, I would say it's a two-step type of approach. First, uh, north south, and then uh, let's let's be more into the uh, east west type of communication and what's what to do with it. And that I would say ties back to what I was just saying. So now we are having more microservices. We're we're facing more challenges from a security perspective and from a visibility perspective. How could we then handle this kind of things? Yeah, so that's kind of going from the why why are we doing it into the what what are we doing right north south east west <laughs> exactly and then, yes. then then eventually <laughs> then eventually the how now from from the audience perspective I'm not sure where the audience are in terms of what they want to hear next um, we tend to keep it on the high not going into the how I mm -hmm. think I think you're, um, you're running some workshops during these two days and you have a booth would that be the place people could find out more about the how. Uh, yeah, we 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 covered. I would say the security piece of the applications with the uh, with the um, the, um, the workshop that we just had. Uh, it was about this application, the web application security type of thing. So how to deploy a WAF into a Kubernetes cluster, or how to deploy a WAF into a CI/CD pipeline. And these are really the type of uh, discussion that we're seeing right now. Because again. Uh, uh, a lot of these uh, security aspects and vis visibility aspects are, I would say, handed over uh, to the developers, and and this is what most of uh, most of the um, um, customers are, are are looking for. Okay, so ba based on that, uh, um, we we really, I would say, um, we done that. We covered that uh, initially in that uh, workshop. And we had a session uh, earlier this afternoon uh, where we expose and um, I would say explored the way to maintain, I would say leg legacy use cases, legacy infrastructure when transitioning to microservices. Because again, these are type of thing that most of our customers are, 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 are um, I would say forced to maintain. Uh, just like I said, they cannot just uh, doing it. They cannot just do a big bang and replace every type of uh, uh, endpoints or every type of devices connecting to the application. So they have to maintain those type of legacy system or legacy interfaces to their applications. And this is what we explored uh, during the the talk that that we have earlier that we had earlier this afternoon. And that, that, that's really, I would say, um, concern that a lot of customers are having right now, because we're seeing that when we're discussing uh, with any type of verticals, it could be a service provider, it could be bank, it could be government. We had a, a, a good talk th this morning uh, from uh, uh, government type of APIs. Uh, those type of, of things are really, I would say, the challenges that most of the customers are facing right now. How can I? publish my APIs, how can I secure my APIs, how can I uh, monitor my APIs, and, and if I have APIs, that the first sign of having microservices under the hood, and, and, and then I, I, how, how, how can I get some help uh, uh, from that? Okay, so I think it's nothing better than examples. So you talked about government. I see there's mm -hmm. an event uh, from Nginx tomorrow on banking. Um, yeah. and so forth. Uh, to keep it more on the topics here, because we've only got like 10 minutes more and really, you know, encouraging okay. questions from people. Uh, I, I would say, um, are, there, are there any other challenges? You've just talked about um, uh, deployment, okay, multi-cloud. You've talked about getting um, the flow um, into microservices out of it and around. Would there be any other challenges um, of moving to microservices? Yes, um, uh, moving to, to microservices. So l let me get back to my deck and show one of the good slides that I have about that. And what I was just saying, if uh, that relates to what I was saying is, um, uh, again, w w w when you have, I would say, a set of microservices, it's usually a set of uh, containers in, a, in an environment which are um, um, communicating to, to each other, sometimes with some control, sometimes without control, because you just pull a container from, from, a, 
from a uh, uh, from the internet and possibly run run it. So uh, um, a lot of the issue that our customers are facing um, and a lot of the challenges that they are, I would say, ex exposing to us is how can I know what's going on and how can I control what's, what's going on and how can I view these kind of things? So one, one of the things that I was just saying is once they reaching the threshold of 15, 20 microservices, then they would have to go and consider technologies like service meshes, which are really the type of technologies that helps into uh, having a, a proper um, guidance on how microservices are communicate, communicating with, with uh, each other. So do they have to have encryption uh, for their communication? Do they, are they allowed to use only specific protocols? Are they uh, allowed to go outside of the application environment and reach out to internet without any control. So these kind of concerns are really, really, really important. And, and this is where most of the challenges um, our customers are, are, are exchanging and discussing with us uh, today. And, and that, that, yep. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Okay. <laughs> And, and uh, uh, moving forward, we, we see that, for instance, when uh, we, we're talking with, I would say, bigger transformation type of project, for instance, uh, I'm, I'm usually uh, taking the example of service providers. Uh, the scale of the change is being really, really, really massive. The, um, the mix of technical challenges also is really getting massive. Because uh, usually, price type of application you're gonna face protocols like web, HTTP, gRPC, or these kind of things. But when you're starting to talk with service providers, with industry, for instance, you're gonna have to um, deal with protocol like uh, MQTT, like uh, um, uh, SCTP protocol, which are really, I would say, uh, vertical specific, and adapt those. Uh, challenges or adapt to uh, to those uh, to the, those type of protocol into the logic of microservices and the logic of managing those microservices, which are consuming those uh, uh, complex type of protocol. So uh, we, we're really having, uh, I would say, a lot of uh, uh, technological evaluation, technological uh, discussion to see how we can tweak either open source technologies or either in-house technologies. So uh, NGINX and F5 or, or, or even open source technologies, we're, we're, we're committed as well to develop uh, uh, code, code to open source, uh, of course, being part of NGINX. Uh, and, and, and just for the sake of having, I would say, uh, uh, proper responses for our customers. And uh, I could just, I would say, uh, uh, pick one of the things that I mentioned during my, my talk. We, we, we are really relying and encouraging a lot of uh, our users to onboard uh, technologies like Node.js, for instance, to tweak the traffic management, to trick the traffic manipulation in a way that they could overcome, I would say, a few of those challenges and adapt their infrastructure to these new challenges and uh, either uh, work with legacy system or just uh, have their infrastructure to support uh, th those new uh, endpoint or those new devices. For instance, we, we, have, seen, we have seen a lot of uh, new traction toward things like uh, gRPC or GraphQL. Uh, those type of protocols are not often um, supported by, I would say, uh, networking or security technologies. So having uh, those kind of capabilities to um, use Node.js to inspect or to treat or to manipulate this traffic could be, I would say, kind of a segue into uh, supporting the, the, this protocol and having some kind of business logic or some kind of security or bringing more visibility into what's going on and getting confidence. Because another thing that we're seeing as well is the lack of, I would say, full support of all those protocols, full support of, uh, I would say, all of the landscape when it's come to develop a lot of microservices and support them globally into multi-cloud environment, uh, sometimes kind of a slow down uh, 
deployment of projects and deployment of new applications. So again, things are not stepped in tone, but these are these are these are these are, these are things that we 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 yep. discuss. So I'm, I'm not sure how the the audience are receiving this, but you know what I'm hearing is to minimize the challenges, start off small with five to 20 microservices, get to know how they can then work with the, um, the compute environment, but also the integration environment, if that's correct. And then from that, then from that scale, uh, secure, reliable, to, 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 to get it uh, up to hundreds of microservices. Um, wh wh when do you think the economic value could be realized from this? You know, the promise of microservices versus uh, conventional deployment. When, when would the, the ROI or the, the commercial aspects be seen? The, that's in, that's one of the things that we're discussing a lot with our customers. Uh, again, that that's that is really tied to um, really tied to the uh, visibility of, of things. Uh, um, uh, how can I appreciate that my infrastructure is properly used and properly uh, giving the service that I expect from it? And once I have that uh, piece in place, then I could possibly uh, think about the monetization of the uh, of the infrastructure and then monetize APIs uh, based on that and possibly uh, open them to public or also open them to partners. And, and, and starting, I would say, to engage a business uh, discussion and, and get the, the, the ROI out of that. From vertical, from one vertical to another, these things are totally different. I would say, uh, if you talk, if you speak to uh, e-commerce type of uh, uh, customers, it's obvious that they're gonna uh, see right away the uh, ROI for uh, their API uh, infrastructure and their microservices environment. Of course, they know how many uh, microservices they have to, 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 to spin up, uh, what, how many requests are handled, how many transactions are handled, and they could definitely get a, a business value uh, out of it. But that possibly goes as well with a consistent view of, of, uh, of uh, the real and proper utilization of all the infrastructure, meaning that from one consumer up to the uh, uh, cart microservices, uh, uh, has it been has it has it been used properly? Uh, has it has then it been I would say oversubscribed or over provisioned uh, um, back to the cost of the of the uh, um, public cloud infrastructure, for instance? So all, all of those things are are, are really um, uh, discussion that that we're having and are really. Uh, uh, I would say engagement that we're having with business owners of so, the infrastructure. So, and in, as you said, this is yeah, really just, just looking at the time, I, I don't see any questions yet, but that's okay. I'm enjoying myself here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're both in Singapore, yeah? Um, what's it like in Singapore? Yes. I mean, how mature, I know it depends on industry, but how, how's it going? Are you finding that, uh, hey, Singapore is the hub, but it's happening in startups. All this microservices is happening in uh, in big enterprises like financial services. Well, where's where's it where's it coming from, and how fast do you think this thing will take off? Right, it seems to be pretty 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 fast in the last year or two. Yeah, it's been it's been if we speak only about Singapore. Yeah, it's been I would say um, uh, led uh, mainly by uh, the financial mm. uh, sector. Primarily, but the government is, I would say, um, quite heavy on that as well. Uh, um, we know that they've been working with cloud providers. The, most of the uh, consulting services around uh, uh, microservices and API security and API de development and deployment here in Singapore. Uh, and and we're starting, I would say, to see here and there some IoT type of project around microservices coming. Uh, I would say out of the out of the out of the wild. Um, that's for Singapore, I would say. And um, lately, I would say micro uh, service providers are a bit behind uh, from from that perspective. But these are really uh, discussion which are starting. Uh, really project which will be, uh, I would say, more um, uh, bigger from a from a size sizing perspective, uh, which is totally understandable. Uh, but if we look at other market in the, in the region, 
speaking about China, for instance, Australia, or even Indonesia, uh, uh, those markets are really also uh, really into microservices, into uh, APIs, uh, um, economy type of yeah. uh, type of business, and 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 they are really one of uh, the, the the type of areas where we having the most advanced uh, type of conversation. I'm I'm, I'm not for forgetting uh, an area like like Japan where we are also having uh, some some uh, I would say uh, leaders. Uh, from a thought perspective, who are really um, innovating a lot and bringing a lot of those uh, concerns about microservices and, and highly scalable application and cloud um, primarily deployed cl uh, application in, in cloud um, with all of the challenges that I have uh, ex exposed, uh, management, security, uh, orchestration, um, uh, being agnostic, I would say more or less to the uh, to the type of business case or, or use case. Uh, those mar this market specifically, Japan is also very in innovative in a sense. Sounds like no better time than to to get on board with microservices, and and to do so in, and to do so in a way yes. that scales, right? So <laughs> yes. securely and reliably. And there's a lot more to cover. Uh, I think we come to the end of the session right now. Um, I guess you've got the uh, workshops, you've got the booth open, right? There's going to be somebody there. Would there mm -hmm. be any other way that people could contact you with their specific questions if they're not going to come up now? Sure, sure. Um, they, they can reach us on, on the booth or I can leave my my, uh, my contact. Even in my pro on my profile mm -hmm. on this platform, they okay. can see my, uh, my LinkedIn profile and even my Twitter account. So uh, as we're working from home, we're always yes. selected. <laughs> And yeah, also, I see questions. there's a bit of education happening in the chat. Uh, a free resource, right? Yes, yes, yes. And Cheryl, okay. our marketing head, is just popping, popping the, the the right uh, image address to send to send requests. So yeah, uh, yeah right and up, probably right someone's going to ask, are your slides available? And again, the best thing is what to, to contact you, right? <laughs> I, I'll make them available, but uh, yeah, easily there's no, nothing confidential in here, so I can I can share them yes. for sure. Okay. All right, so we're just scheduled for, let me see, because there's other sessions happening, so we have to finish on time. Um, oh, we're actually a little bit over time. Anyway, it's been fun uh, chatting to you, um, or chatting with you, Lawrence, and uh, I guess if there's any other questions, now is the time to, to ask them. Um, anything else from anyone? Any burning questions to get started? Okay. Anyway, uh, hey, thanks everyone for attending and uh, patiently learning about the challenges of um, migrating to microservices. And Lauren, thank you so much for putting this together and sharing your knowledge. Thank you so My much. My pleasure. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.